right now on this Inside the Kirtland Temple special. The church just bought the Kirtland Temple. It's a blessing to be able to be here. I'm so grateful that I was able to walk to that temple. The Kirtland Temple back open. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints acquired it from Community of Christ and are starting their beginning tours. A look inside for the first time under new ownership. Plus. The Savior appeared here, he accepted it, and the temple had a purpose. Joseph Smith saw our Savior, and our Savior said everything for us. A sacred site and rich history. What church members believe happened in Kirtland hundreds of years ago, and what it means for members and non-members today, and. It's one additional thing to come and visit Kirtland, Ohio. We invite everyone to come to Kirtland. It really is a special place. An invitation. It goes beyond just visiting. How the spirit of Kirtland touches around the world. This is an ABC4 News special. Inside the Kirtland Temple, Sarah Murphy reports. Inside the Kirtland Temple. Thanks for joining us for this special right here on ABC4 News. I'm Sarah Murphy. I spent the week in Kirtland, Ohio, where the temple is back open for the very first time in weeks since the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints acquired it from Community of Christ earlier this month. It was the first temple members of the church built. Members believe many sacred experiences happened inside, the most significant of which they say is a visit from Jesus Christ himself. This week, hundreds of members from all over the world are visiting for the newly reopened tours, and we went inside too. A day of wind and gray shouldn't turn you away. At least that's what many in Kirtland, Ohio say. Nearly 30 miles east of Cleveland, you'll drive down a road and find the white church on top of the hill. The simple yet intriguing white building brings in hundreds of visitors around the world each week. Are you guys <laughs> excited for today? Yeah. What are you most excited for? Uh, probably going to the temple. March 25th, 2024, an especially significant time. Today is a wonderful day, a day of celebration for us. It's a day of remembering above all things and uh, a day of community. The Kirtland Temple reopened for the first time in over three weeks when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints acquired it from Community of Christ. We came because it's the opening of the Kirtland Temple and I wanted my boys to see it. We're looking forward to seeing the temple. We were here a few years ago and since the church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, gained repossession of it, we wanted to tour it again. and have the perspective of taking the tour with the missionaries and seeing it from that aspect. This was the first tour group to enter since the reopening. They have tours of about 25 people scheduled in the temple each hour. Leading those groups are senior missionaries called to serve in historic Kirtland. It was thrilling. It was. It was very sweet and, and very thrilling to be able to have such a privilege. You'd see lumber that has... A the site leader over historic Kirtland, day, President Scott Barrick, says the moment they the learned about the acquisition of the temple, he and, and his missionaries no started blog. preparing. We were in the temple the next day with all of our missionaries and our colleagues from Salt Lake talking about the approach, getting a sample of how they wanted us to be able to do the tour. We don't learn as fast as we used to when we were younger. It takes us a little longer. Uh, our, our minds are still uh, uh, adequate and good, and we were, we're honored to be part of it, but it takes a lot of work uh, to uh, go through the materials that have been prepared. It's, it's hard not to get emotional about it because um, these are people we joke, we're all of a certain age. But they recognize miracles have come along the way. The feeling of sharing the experiences of what happened here, they fill your heart and um, uh, kind of amazing and very touching and heartwarming. 
Those feelings, they explain, come while inside the temple. We weren't allowed to film the tours, but we did get a look inside. The tour takes you up 66 stairs to the third floor, an area with classrooms, many original floorboards from the 1800s, and an original window built by early Latter-day Saints. The second and the first floor hold all white chapels. Visitors say the attention to detail stands out. What stood out to me was the craftsmanship. These people were poor, but they put everything they had into that temple. It's like just the little designs and like the handwork that went into it. For some, being in the temple brings back memories of visiting in the past. I remember going up the stairs because those were really steep and I got tired. <laughs> and I remember the big room and it was like, it looked like a chapel. For others, it's a bit trickier to recall. I was like here and I was like four. No, you were like six. Oh yeah, I was like six and then she was four when we went. I, I don't even remember it. The Santiago family, visiting from Virginia, say their experience is something they'll never forget. My experience has been great, and also being able to bring my family here, it's a blessing to be able to be here. We will continue calling the temple, uh, even though it's a historic uh, monument, or, you know, but it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be and to come and visit. A place where skies might be gray, but inside that building on top of the hill, for many, it turns brighter. Church leaders and members say, standing as a beacon to all. Coming up on Inside the Kirtland Temple. It has been a, a bittersweet experience for us. It's been a sad, sad thing for them to transfer ownership and possession of it. What the change in temple ownership means for both churches and where they go from here and later. Our goal is simple, that we want to invite others to come unto Christ. That's what we do. An invitation to all. How the Kirtland Temple impacts you right back in Utah. watching an ABC4 News special inside the Kirtland Temple. Before the acquisition, Community of Christ owned the Kirtland Temple for more than 140 years. The impact of the change of ownership, both churches acknowledge. Across the street from the Kirtland Temple is Kirtland Community of Christ. It's distinct from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Latter-day Saints' first modern-day prophet was Joseph Smith. His son, Joseph Smith III, was ordained as president of Community of Christ in 1860. While sharing many similar beliefs, a main distinction at the time between the two religions was Community of Christ recognized Joseph Smith's descendants as leaders. Meanwhile, the Latter-day Saints looked to its Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Community of Christ, formerly known as the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, acquired legal ownership over the Kirtland Temple in 1901. I'm just appreciative that the Community of Christ Church has done such a good job of taking care of it, but um, I mean, it's just it's just open again. It's not that we have it or they have it, but I'm just happy that I can, I can come and visit it. The Kirtland Temple and Kirtland Community of Christ rest at the top of a hill. Down the road, you'll find historic Kirtland, owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. From that standpoint... President Scott Barrick, leader of the historic Kirtland site, says years ago, given their history, there was a time where the relationship between the two churches was complicated. And for many years, there was this antagonistic attitude with the community of Christ and the church. This is decades ago, not, not, not now, because we've had a wonderful relationship. But in times past, it used to be, you stay at the top of the hill, and we'll stay at the bottom of the hill. Over the years, though, their relationship evolved and strengthened to the point where now the change of ownership of the temple brings strong emotions to both. 
Cartland Stake President Nathan Johnson says there's some mixed feelings. This is just a, a change in stewardship because our friends from the Community of Christ have been making the temple accessible and caring for it so well. And President Barrick agrees. It, it has been a bittersweet experience for us. Uh, the bitter has been that we have these wonderful close friends of the Community of Christ. And this has been their life and their livelihood. Some of them have sacrificed. Some of them are volunteers like we are. And so it, it has been a, a little bit hard to watch that transition. You know, as we're coming in, uh, looking to see how things will work, they're packing up and moving, uh, moving away. All the stuff that's in the visitor center, they've been carefully taken care of. On the flip side, it's just amazing to be in that space and to be able to tell the stories that of, of what happened there. Now we can tell those stories where they happen. And it's different. It's very different. While declining any on-camera interviews, Community of Christ shares their message. They say it's reassuring to know these important places are in the care of people who will love and cherish them with the same devotion we have cared for them over the last century. Elder Kyle S. McKay, General Authority 70, historian and recorder for The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, reminds of the greater purpose of the temple. Remember that this temple is a temple of the Lord and it doesn't belong to us, it doesn't belong to organizations, it's his house and so it's a, it's a day to remember that. Whether it's the church at the top of the hill or down the road, members say it's greater than them. Still ahead. Certainly this is one of the most significant places on the earth. There's a lot of things that took place here that are very significant and special living shoulder to shoulder with history, the background of Kirtland, what happened there, and what it means for you. Plus. I would tell them that, that everything is in good care and, um, and that it's going to be here. The church has pledged to run this as a historic site. Words of reassurance. What comes next for the Kirtland Temple? You're watching an ABC4 News special inside the Kirtland Temple. Down the hill from the Kirtland Temple, you'll find historic Kirtland. It's an area with additional historic landmarks like the Newell K. Whitney store. Church leaders say the history of Kirtland is rich. This so is this is my house. We, this, is, this is where I live, right here. We really? Uh-huh, yeah, no, it's historically, it's a tannery. In Kirtland, Ohio, Scott Barrick says every day he's shoulder to shoulder with history. So when we say we feel like we're neighbors with Ann Whitney, we really mean it. President Barrick is not only leader of the historic Kirtland site. For the time being, he lives there. How cool is that to live there? <laughs> yeah, and, and the commute is awful. I mean, look at it, it takes me three minutes. <laughs> church leaders dedicated historic Kirtland in 2003. While there, you can take tours, see exhibits, and learn about early members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who gathered there in the 1830s. It's home to a visitor center and seven historic structures like the N.K. Whitney store and the Newell and Ann Whitney home. The early residents of Kirtland, sometimes we often talk to them as seekers. They were people who were expecting a restoration. They were looking for further light and knowledge than they had at that time. Um, Anna and Newell Whitney were among those. The Whitneys also opened their two-story, 1,500-square-foot store in Kirtland. They say the store had a relatively large inventory at the time and served as a storehouse for provisioning the poor. Latter-day Saints believe the second floor was home to many sacred experiences. When you come here, what you have a sense of is how real it is. It's not just a footnote in the Doctrine and Covenants when it says a general conference of the church convened in Kirtland, Ohio. We're standing 
in the parlor of the Newell K. Whitney store where that conference took place. This is the locale for the general conference. When you're in the School of the Prophets, and it, we have the testimony of Joseph Smith saying to the brethren assembled, you have seen the Father and the Son and know that they exist. It's different. Those feelings and testimonies, members say, extend from the second floor of the Newell K. Whitney store to inside the Kirtland Temple as well. The main thing that comes out of this temple, at least for me, and I think for, for people of our religion, is that the Savior appeared here, He accepted it, and the temple had a purpose. And the primary among the purposes of this temple is to get the keys restored that were restored here through Moses and Elias and Elijah. Obviously, this is a really important um, temple, a structure for our church, and there's a lot of things that took place here that are very significant and special. Let me describe to you how important Kirtland is to the church. About one half of the revelations recorded in the Doctrine and Covenants were revealed there, far more than any other location. In Kirtland, the Father and the Son appeared or were seen in vision four times, and the Savior was seen at least six more times by the prophet Joseph Smith. Members believe whether or not you're in Kirtland, the principles they teach there affect people across the globe. I don't know how many people throughout the world know about the Kirtland Temple, but what happened in this temple, what was restored in this temple, and uh, the sealing powers and the keys that were restored are throughout the world now. It's something President Barrick remembers. The oldest uh, lumber on the whole site is in that house. <gasps> Walking along the roads of historic Kirtland. Coming up on Inside the Kirtland Temple. It's an unbelievable answer to many, many prayers. The spirit that you feel in there, well, for me anyway, it's amazing. The spirit of Kirtland. What is it? and why church leaders say it impacts you all the way in Utah. You're watching an ABC4 News special, Inside the Kirtland Temple. Church leaders acknowledge not everyone will get the opportunity to go to Kirtland and inside the temple, but they say anyone anywhere can experience the spirit of Kirtland. Going through the Kirkland Temple, I may realize that the saints sacrificed a lot to worship their savior. There's a lot of things that took place here that are very significant and special. Yeah, it's very special. I mean, for me, I just wanted to feel the, the spirit. A sacred place, they say, with a special spirit. and you just feel it in your heart, and it strengthens your testimony. Just amazing to, to know that this is not a collection of well-meaning stories. This is the truth. This is what happened. This is the restoration of the gospel, and it is unfolding in this way, at this time, in this place. Members say every crack and corner of the Kirtland Temple stands for what they believe in. Well, it's just an opportunity for us to continue to tell the story of what happened here. With temple doors now open, members say it's been a long time coming. For the, the saints here in Kirtland that have lived here for many years, it's an unbelievable answer to many, many prayers. their message to all, an invitation. I'd also invite them to come. The message here is pretty simple. The Lord God Almighty 
loves his children. And he has manifest himself here in Ohio several times, and especially in the Kirtland Temple. We invite everyone to come to Kirtland. It really is a special place. Even for those in this area, Kirtland is, is somewhat unique in, in the faith community that's here of multiple denominations. And we just want everyone to experience the feelings and the spirit that accompany this sacred ground. From the windows on the temple, to the benches on the grounds, to the plants nearby, they describe that sacred feeling. But church leaders say that spirit extends farther than just Kirtland. I think it's important to understand that the spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever in Kirtland, Nauvoo, or Salt Lake, or Alaska, or anywhere. And the spirit is the same, no matter where, no matter what. They say the temple, standing for over 100 years, meant to stand over 100 years more. With respect to the temple, we will continue to offer it as a historic site. It will not be transformed into an operating temple. It will continue to be available to the public at large and to, to members of our faith and any faith. And the future of the temple in Kirtland, Ohio. We are continue to learn more. Uh, we will have a lot of opportunities for the church historians to have really complete access to understand and know about this building, what it, what it needs, the care that it's been given. So from, from that standpoint, it's going to be here. It will serve, I think, primarily, I, I hope, primarily as a reminder. We have places like this, memorials, historic sites, to connect us to the past, but above all, to remind us of Jesus Christ. And that's the only one that we're under covenant to remember always. Members say, stays looking bright. You've heard members describe the experiences they've had in Kirtland and inside the reopened temple. Whether you're in Ohio, here in Utah, or across the globe, they say they invite all to visit. Thanks for joining us right here for this Inside the Kirtland Temple special on ABC4 News.